Star Wars truly has had a storied history with gaming. In 1982, The Empire Strikes Back on the Atari 26000 was one of the very first movie tie-in games ever created. While there have been some serious clunkers through the years, Connect Star Wars being one of many examples, it's also had some genre defining games along the way. Brian Lloyd here and this is my ranking of the 10 best Star Wars games. We kick things off with The Force Unleashed. While it didn't have the finesse of, say, Jedi Academy or the complexity of Knights of the Old Republic, there was nevertheless a real visceral feeling about The Force Unleashed that made it compelling to play. Not only that, Starkiller was a fascinating character and Sam Whitmer's performance really helped to give it a level of gravitas in what was essentially a rip of hack and slash action. Next up, Episode 1 Racer. Taking inspiration from the likes of Wipeout and F-Zero X, Episode 1 Racer took the best part of the Phantom Menace after that lightsaber duel with Darth Maul and made it into one of the best games of the prequel trilogy. While not exactly rich with features, it was nevertheless a relentlessly fun time to bash other players off the track. While Jango Fett as a character never quite had the same impact as Boba Fett, our next choice, Bounty Hunter, had a lot more personality than the character itself. Mixing outrageous shoot 'em up action, dual wielding blasters was never so much fun. With platform mechanics, the game was a minor hit on the GameCube and the PS2, and one that's overlooked because it doesn't feature a lightsaber or a starship as part of its mechanic. Brought to life through first person 3D Mode 7 graphics, Super Empire Strikes Back lets the player take on a variety of roles from the Star Wars saga. When you compare it to something like Shadows of the Empire, Super Empire Strikes Back felt far more rewarding. The game, however, was ridiculously hard. If you managed to make it through some of the early levels, you were, however, treated to some fantastic gunplay. The Battle of Hot Stage, in particular, was an early forerunner for the likes of Rogue Squadron. The backgrounds were beautifully drawn, and switching between Luke and Han and both of them being markedly different, not just a sprite change, was intriguing. Real-time strategy games like Command & Conquer Red Alert and Age of Empires may have sadly been consigned to the dustbin of gaming history, but there was a brief shining moment when they were everywhere. And the one thing that kept everyone guessing was when LucasArts was going to give everyone the real-time strategy Star Wars game that was so desperately wanted. Enter Empire at War. The idea of commanding a huge fleet of Star Destroyers and hearing your officers roaring, FLANK SPEED! as they pincered a Mon Calamari cruiser was always a treat. Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight may have been the first third-person action game to put a lightsaber in your hand, but it wasn't until Jedi Academy came along that the graphics really caught up with it. While the single-player campaign had its moments, multiplayer was its strength. The lightsaber dueling hasn't been bested yet in the entire intellectual property. The updated Battlefront and Battlefront 2 have certainly tried to wow players, but the original Battlefront 2 hasn't been topped for mindless good fun. Indeed, the fact that Battlefront 2 still has a vibrant online multiplayer community is a testament to just how enjoyable it was. What's more, the single player campaign didn't feel like it was a mere tutorial for the multiplayer. If ever there was a game that deserves, no, needs a remastered version, it's Republic Commando. The seamless controls that allowed you to deploy your squad mates was second to none. The way in which it made battle droids look like a terrifying threat, the baritone choirs that played as you rushed through the stages, the underlying feeling of dread that you were alone by your squad mates and that it was on you to survive or die. All of that was so markedly different from anything that had the Star Wars label on it. Republic Commando was one of the first games to truly embrace the harder edges of the Star Wars universe. Space simulators are only just now beginning to make their way back into popularity, with thanks to the likes of Elite Dangerous, No Man's Sky, Star Citizen, and now Star Wars Squadrons. However, their history dates back to the first major PC games, and two names stand out. One is Wing Commander, the other is X-Wing. The final installment of the X-Wing franchise was X-Wing Alliance, our number two choice, and successfully blended both together the infectious multiplayer components of X-Wing vs TIE Fighter and the deep single player campaign of TIE Fighter. Our final choice, you guessed it, Knights of the Old Republic. As prodigious as Star Wars has been when it comes to gaming, there's only really been a handful of games that really made you feel like you were inside that universe. X-Wing Alliance had it, because it shoved you right into the cockpit of an X-Wing or a TIE Interceptor. Republic Commando did it too, putting you down the trenches and scrabbling to stay alive. 
but only one game though captured the sense of scale and the sprawling galaxy beyond and that was Knights of the Old Republic. The game drew heavily on the operatic flourishes inherent in Star Wars, and put you right in the middle of a rich story, a tragedy really, and made you set it right. What's your favourite Star Wars game? Let us know in the comments and stay tuned to entertainment.ie for more gaming content in the near future.